Hey, good morning, A2. Welcome to our worship experience, our virtual worship experience for you guys. Hope you guys had a very Merry Christmas with your families. We, I know we all did here, and we're so excited to worship with you this morning. So I just want to encourage you as we, as we sing these songs, just worship wherever you are, with your family, at home. Just sing to the Lord, amen? Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive a King. Let every heart prepare in room. In heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and
This is his heart upon the cross And from his wounds his mercies flow And now that on with death to death And ever since that grave's been empty Come on! So be hold him Be hold him Lift up your eyes See the sun of heaven And Hosanna Hosanna Pour out your praise Sing the name Sing that again Come on! Behold Him, just behold Him, lift up your eyes, see the Son of Heaven, and Hosanna, Hosanna, pour out your praise, sing the name of Jesus. This is his home here in our chest at every door our Savior's knocking. Oh, let him in. Oh, let him out. With every yes, his kingdom's coming. The sound of Standing on, you're more real than the wind in my lungs. Your thoughts define me, you're inside me, you're my.
closer than the skin on my bones. You're closer than the song on my tongue. Your thoughts. Your thoughts define me. You're inside me. You're my reality. Thank you so much for joining us for this special online worship experience. I know that you've already experienced God and there is more to come. Hey, I want to ask you to do something right now. Take out your smart device or if you've already downloaded the A2 Church app, open it up and go to the connection card. Now, every week we ask you to take your smart device and point it to the QR code or open up the app and go to the connection card in your church app because we love knowing that you've worshiped with us. And if all you wanna do on that connection card is list your name, that's enough. We take it as a huge honor to pray over the names of every person who completes a connection card week in and week out. If you'd like to let us know more about yourself, we welcome that as well. In fact, if you have a special prayer need that you would like us to join you in praying about, list that need on the connection card and this afternoon, a group of people will go into action praying over your needs. Now's also a great time to prepare to honor God with His tithe and our offering. 
I want to talk to you about giving for just a few minutes. You know, for more than 13 years, A2 Church has been defined by this statement. I'm actually wearing it. We are a church for people who've given up on church. I want to break it down for just a bit. A2 Church is, first of all, we're a church. We're not a club, organization, building, business. We are a biblically defined, Jesus-centered, spirit-filled, people-loving, life-changing church. Secondly, we're a church for people. We are for people, not against them. Because we believe people matter to God and they ought to matter to us. We like to say it like this. We are for God. We are for Birmingham. We are for people. We are for you. Three, we're a church for people who've given up. I mean, A2 Church is a church for real people. It's a church for anyone and everyone who has ever felt like giving up. And four, we're a church for people who've given up on church. They haven't necessarily given up on God, but they've been hurt wounded, maybe let down by the church. And we want God to use this church to change the ending of that story. For more than 13 years, you've helped us be a church for people who've given up on church. And I want to encourage you, as we close out this year, we prepare to begin a new year. I want to ask you to pray about honoring God and blessing A2 with a special year in gift. Your special year in gift will help us close this year strong and prepare to hit the ground running in 2022 with continuing life-changing ministry. We've got so much planned for this year. Now, I want to thank you in advance for your prayerful consideration. And as always, I hope you know we are, I am, praying for you. As we prepare to wrap up this year and begin a brand new year, I'm praying that God will bless you, that he will fulfill every good dream he has for you, that he will complete his purpose and plan for your life, and that he will grant you a very happy new year. If there's ever any way we can serve you, please let us know. But thank you so much for being a part of what God is doing at A2. In just a moment, Riley's going to come and share with you some important announcements. And right after that, Zach Walker, one of your pastors, is going to come today and close out the year with a life-changing, dynamic message. I hope you'll be ready to receive it. We all look forward to seeing you next week, January 2, in person and online, 9 and 1030. Again, thanks so much for being a part. God bless. Happy New Year. Hey y'all, I'm Riley Graham, a student here at A2, and here are this week's announcements. We hope you enjoy this week as the year comes to an end and have time to reflect on 2021 while dreaming big for 2022. We're believing God for big things right here at A2 and can't wait to see what he does in and through all of you. We look forward to seeing you right here on campus on January 2nd as we close our Christmas Wish series and start the new year by gathering together at 9 and 10.30. It's also PJ Day and A2 Kids, so parents, be sure your little ones come in their favorite pajamas. What a better way to kick off 2022 than by declaring God's word together. Declaration 2022 is a special time that we dedicate to reading the entire Bible out loud in one week. No matter your age or your reading skill, you can read God's word and experience the power that is unleashed when we declare it over ourselves, our family and friends, our church, our city, and beyond. You can go to Declaration 2022 in the app or on a2.church to find the spots that work best for you. Declaration 2022 kicks off on January 9th at 2 p.m. and will go through the week until we get to the end. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on this powerful experience. Are you interested in taking your next steps but don't know where to begin? We invite you to join us in the month of January on the second, third, and fourth Sundays at 9.30 a.m. for Begin. We'll explain how you belong here, how you can become more like Jesus, and how you can go and be loved to the world. You can RSVP by going to the app or a2.church and clicking on the Begin button. Be sure to check us out on a2.church, download our app, and follow us on social to stay up to date, stay connected, and stay involved. That's all the news that we have for you this week, so prepare your hearts for today's message.
Well, Merry Christmas, A2 Church. Zach Walker here. It is such an honor to be uh, just able to spend some time with you today on the Sunday after Christmas. Hope you had an amazing time uh, celebrating Christmas. Maybe you're still celebrating. I know we've got some more family activities in the coming uh, days. So uh, really excited just to be with you today for this virtual worship experience. And hey, before we jump in, uh, parents, if you have some kids with you uh, right now, and if they're sitting there, if you went to church virtually with your kids today, then our kids director, Isabel, has done something really cool. She's created an interactive bingo um, card for them to follow along with our message today. So head over to our A2 Church app, check that out. In fact, even if you don't have any kids with you right now, you will definitely want to head over to our church app and follow along with us using those message notes right there. I'm so excited to share uh, with you guys today. You know, this year is just so special because we get to spend so much time with the most important people in our lives celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And today we're gonna talk about something along those lines, okay? We're gonna talk about relationships and friendships. The past few weeks, we've been in our Christmas series called Christmas Wish. And we've just been considering regrets that people have at the end of their lives as told by palliative care nurse, Bronnie Ware in her book, The Top Five Wishes of the Dying. And here's the basic gist of the series uh, that we've been in for the past few weeks. And it's this, to live with intention now so that we don't have regrets later. That's basically what we're talking about. And today we're talking about regret number five from this book. And here's that regret. It'll come up on your screen. I wish that I had stayed in touch with my friends. I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. Here's what Bronnie writes in her book about this specific regret. Here it is, I quote, often they, being the dying, would not truly realize the full benefits of old friends until their dying weeks. And it was not always possible to track them down. Many had become so caught up in their own lives that they had let golden friendships slip by over the years. There were many deep regrets about not giving friendships the time and effort that they deserved. And then Bronnie writes this, Everyone misses their friends when they're dying. So today on this Christmas Sunday, the day after Christmas and the last Sunday of 2021, let's talk about friendships. And I actually love that we're closing out the year on this topic because we uh, had an amazing sermon series earlier this year that some of you may remember called Got Your Six. And we unpacked a ton of really practical and helpful biblical counsel on relationships. And, and today I wanna help us as a church to reverse engineer our lives, so to speak, so that we can live a life of intentional approach to our friendships. Now, of course, I'm gonna say the next sentence, but the Bible has a lot to say about friendships and their importance in our lives. And so I want us to go to 2 Timothy chapter four. The apostle Paul teaches us a couple of really important principles as he finishes up the last letter that he is believed to have written before his death. And so Paul writes 2 Timothy in a Roman jail cell months before his execution. You see, he knows that death is imminent and it's quickly approaching him. So he finishes up his last letter to his spiritual son and protege, Timothy, in a really powerful way by writing these verses right here. Second Timothy chapter four, it's gonna come up on your screen for you there, starting in verse nine. Paul says this, do your best, Timothy, to come to me soon. For Demas, in love with this present world, he's deserted me, he's gone to Thessalonica, Crescens, he's gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Luke alone is with me, Paul writes in verse 11. Then he says this, get Mark, bring him with you for he is very useful to me for ministry. Tychicus, I have sent to Ephesus. And when you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books and above all the parchments. Verse 14, Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm the Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Skipping down a little further to verse 19 here in 2 Timothy chapter four, Paul continues, greet Prisca and Aquila and the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus remained at Corinth and I left Trophimus who was ill at Melitus. Do your best to come before winter. 
Eubulus sends greetings to you, as do Pudens and Linus and Claudia and all the brothers. As Paul finishes his last letter that he would write, as he himself nears death, what is his mind consumed with? His mind is consumed with none other than the people in his life. It is people, relationships, both good and bad that Paul is just consumed with in the final months and moments of his life. I mean, in those nine verses that we just read, he mentions 17 different relationships. Paul is thinking about people and that's really powerful for us to see. Now, I actually don't see any reason to suspect that Paul is full of regret as he writes about these people from his prison cell. That wasn't the purpose of me sharing this text with you today. I believe that Paul's hyper focus on people in his final letter before death teaches us three truths about friendships that we can learn today and then apply to our own lives. So, so here are those three truths, okay? Number one, we need friends. <laughs> This is simple as that. Paul had them and Paul had a lot of them. I mean, just notice how in verse 19, he mentions Prisca and Aquila. Now this might be a familiar uh, couple pairing that you've seen elsewhere in scripture. It's a wife and a husband that actually gets mentioned six times in the New Testament. You may remember one of those names as being Priscilla. And you would be right. Prisca and Priscilla are the same person. So Why does Paul call her Prisca here, but Priscilla elsewhere? Well, he does that because this is a close relationship for him. Like this is an endearing way of referring to someone important to him, a nickname, you might say. Paul, he had friends and he even had close friends at that. So so if Paul, the apostle Paul, who, who planted churches and raised up pastors and defended the gospel needed friends, then we do too. We all need friends. That's just the truth that we learn here. We need friends. So here is our second truth that we learn today from Paul's passages. It's this, friendships are messy. That's number two right there. Friendships are messy. Two of the relationships that he mentions are, are well, rather unmentionable, right? Maybe you noticed them. One was, was from verse 10. Paul writes how Demas deserted Paul. And then in verse 14, Paul writes how Alexander the coppersmith did him great harm. So here's the truth. People may disappoint us. And people, they, they may hurt us. Maybe as we're finishing off this year, you've just been reflecting on how people in your life have have hurt you, have disappointed you. Those types of things very well may happen. And if it might happen to us, then it's also possible for us to do that to other people. Here's the deal. Friendships are messy. Friendships are absolutely messy, but this doesn't mean that we should just throw the baby out with the bathwater. I mean, look at verse 11 right there. Paul tells Timothy to bring Mark because he is useful for ministry. What a powerful statement that is. This is the same Mark that Paul wanted nothing to do with in Acts chapter 15 because of the lack of belief that he had in Mark for the purposes of of ministry. And yet God's grace worked in that relationship and God's grace healed that relationship. And if God's grace did that to the messy relationship between Paul and Mark, then he can do that in the messy relationships that you might have in your life right there. Loss of relationship and relational pain, they they might be discouraging, but this should not be grounds for just refusing to make them a priority in our life. Friendships are messy because people are involved, but they're worth it and we need them. Which leads to number three. The third truth from this passage is this. Relational health affects spiritual health and vice versa. Relational health affects spiritual health and vice versa. Paul is strengthened in his final days on this earth by the reflection of and the remembrance of the friendships that the Lord had blessed him with. God uses the important people in Paul's life to encourage him and to challenge him and to support him in his mission and purpose. God uses the church, people, friendships to grow Paul spiritually and emotionally. Godly friendships are a part 
of the redemptive plan of God in your life. He wants to use the people in your life to grow you, to mature you, to strengthen you. And here's the beautiful thing about how God's kingdom works. Relational health promotes spiritual health. Relational health promotes spiritual health. One way that you can grow spiritually next year, 2022 and beyond, like if that's a goal that you have for next year, one way that you can grow spiritually is by making relational health a priority in your life. I think I just need to say that again. One way that you can grow spiritually is by making relational health a priority in your life. And the same is true vice versa. Spiritual health affects relational health. In fact, an incredible litmus test to see how you're doing spiritually, uh, it's to see how you're doing relationally. In fact, I mean, uh, whenever I know that things are happening inside of my heart that I need to address spiritually, I know that oftentimes because I can sense that relationships in my own life are starting to become tense or they're starting to just be some conflict or friction in the relationships in my life. That's how I know I might have some things in my heart that I need to work on spiritually. Our relationships with other people can be really useful in assessing how we're doing with our relationship with God. So, We've established grounds for the fact that we need friends, that, that friendships are messy, and that relational health affects spiritual health. So how can we now apply this to our lives, reverse engineer our lives so that at the end of our lives, or, or how about this, at the end of 2022, we can look back like Paul and just reflect on the abundance of the beautiful friendships in our lives and, and how God used those friendships to shape and form us to be more like Jesus. Here's the thing. I fully believe that no matter how you grade yourself today in your relational health, like maybe some of us watching right now are like, yo, I, I got an A plus, I'm cruising right now, A minus, like I am doing great relationally. And if that's you, that's awesome. But some of us might be watching right now and we're saying like, yeah, I'm failing at this right now. If I had to give myself a grade on my relational health, I might just be skirting by with a C minus right there. And I just wanna say this, no matter how you grade yourself today in your relational health, you can make God-driven friendships a priority in your life. And you can take huge steps forward in 2022 in your relational health. In fact, in fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and declare this over someone watching right now that 2022 will be the best year of your life in terms of community, friendships, and life-changing relationships in Jesus' name. I just declare that. God is bringing friends into your life, good friends, friends who love you for who you are, godly friends with strong character and faith to support you. God is bringing wise friends into your life to come alongside you. 2022 is gonna be a breakthrough year for you and the relationships that you've been wanting and praying for are going to start to bud in your life next year. I declare that over someone watching this right now. And if Hey, you know who you are, so just receive that in faith, okay? Uh, as we start to quickly close down right here, I want to talk about two practices that we can apply to our lives to help us to grow relationally next year, okay? And beyond. Uh, and here's the, first, here's the first practice, all right? Eliminate busyness. <laughs> Oh man, eliminate busyness. How many of us when COVID hit almost two years ago were saying that we would never fill our calendars up the way that we did before COVID only to become repeat offenders? You know, I, I've got my hand up on that one. You know, like I'm, I'm probably busier now than I even was before COVID. Like when COVID first started, nearly everyone had nearly blank calendars, at least for a short amount of time, only to have those blank calendars become just as full, if not more so as time progressed. Here's the thing. Busyness is an enemy to relational health. Busyness is, a, is an enemy to relational health and to spiritual health for that matter. I'll share the story with you that John Mark Comer tells in his book, uh, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. He, he tells a story of uh, just 
giant in the faith, Dallas, Dallas Willard, who's having a conversation with this pastor who's wanting to grow in their relationship with Jesus. And this pastor had the opportunity to talk with Dallas on the phone. And so I'm just gonna read you an excerpt from uh, Comer's book, uh, the way that he tells the story. Uh, he writes this, he says, the pastor, he calls up Willard and, and he asks Willard this question. What do I need to do to become the me that I want to be? Comer writes, there's a long silence on the other end of the line. And then according to this pastor, with Willard, there's always a long silence on the other end of the line. Finally, Willard speaks up and says this, you must ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. And then the pastor asks, okay, what else? Another long silence. And Willard finally speaks up and says, there is nothing else. Hurry is the great enemy of spiritual life in our day. You must ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. End of story. I love what else Corey, uh, Comer says later on in his book. Uh, I included the quote for you there. It's gonna come up on your screen. Comer says this, both sin and busyness have the exact same effect. They cut off your, connect your connection to God, to other people, and even to your own soul. Most of us, Comer writes, are too busy to follow Jesus. Man, I don't know about you, but that quote kind of hits right here for me. You know, uh, maybe you've heard that famous saying, like if the devil can't make you sin, then he's gonna make you busy. We need to eliminate hurry from our life if we want to grow relationally and as a result, spiritually, in our life next year. Maybe this means that you and your spouse need to have a family meeting and make some changes about how you've been allowing your calendar to get so full. Or maybe this means that you just need to consider like how to create healthier boundaries in your life. Maybe you need to install a Sabbath rhythm into your weekly routine, or maybe you just need to establish guidelines for yourself on when you will and when you won't be on your phone. In fact, I was just thinking about this. I think if this book, The Top Five Wishes of the Dying, were to be rewritten 30 or 40 years from now, then, then this wish, regret number five, I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends, I think it might be rephrased to be something like this. I wish that I had spent less time on my phone and more time with the people that I love. I wish that I had not been so distracted by screens when the people that I cherish the most are sitting right in front of me. Maybe that's how this wish would be reworded 30 to 40 years from now. I'm not sure, but I do believe this, whatever it takes, we need to eliminate busyness from our lives next year so that we can become more relationally healthy, which leads to the second practice of how we can become more relationally healthy. And it's this, be the friend that you want to have. Be the friend that you want to have. I fully believe this. I believe that we are responsible for the culture of friendship in our own life. Like, like whether we realize it or not, we have a culture of friendship in our life by which I basically just mean that in the same way your workplace has a culture and, and our church has a culture and your family has a culture and Walmart has a culture, your friendships have a culture. And the way that we set the culture of friendship in our life is largely based off of the type of friendship that we give away, not the type of friendship that we receive. The type of friendship that we give away will be the type of friendship that we receive, not the other way around. Zach, where'd you get that from? Show me that in the Bible. Okay, I will. Galatians chapter six, verse seven, it teaches us that whatever one sows, that they will also reap. And 2 Corinthians 9, 6 teaches us that whoever sows sparingly, reaps sparingly. Whoever sows bountifully, reaps bountifully. The fruit is determined by the seed. The fruit is determined by the seed. If I want an apple tree, which I don't know why I would want an apple tree, but if I did, then I would plant the seed of an apple tree, not the seed of an orange tree, not the seed of, a, of, a, of an av avocado tree. Like I would plant the seed of an apple tree. And in the same way, if I want the fruit of amazing friendships, 
then I will plant the seed of amazing friendships. I love what theologian Cornelius Platinga says about this principle. And I'll quote him here. He says, no matter what we sow, the law of returns applies. Good or evil, love or hate, justice or tyranny, grapes or thorns, a gracious compliment or a peevish complaint. Whatever we invest, we tend to get it back with interest. Lovers are loved, haters hated. Forgivers usually get forgiven and those who live by the sword die by the sword. And then he quotes Galatians chapter uh, six, verse seven, the verse I just went over. God is not mocked for whatever you reap, you will also sow. So don't wait for the amazing friend to come into your life, become the amazing type of friends to other. So amazing friendships into your life in order to reap the fruit of it. The quality of the friendships that you reap is determined by the quality of the friendship that you sow. We can't control what type of friend someone else will be to us, but we can control what type of friend that we will be to others. So I think that we just need to determine, like as we close down this year, that going into 2022, I am going to sow intentionally. I'm going to sow investments. I'm going to sow initiative into my friendships. If you want to reap friends who you know will actually pray for you when they say, I'm praying for you, then be that friend to someone else. If you want to reap friends who reach out to you first and try to get on your calendar, then be that friend who reaches out to them and tries to get on their calendar. If you wanna reap friends that text you every year on the day that your grandparents or parents passed away, then be that friend who sends those texts. If you want to reap friends who give you their full attention when you're with them and they don't ignore you just to be on their phone, then be that friend. If you want to reap friends who are selfless and considerate and compassionate and kind, gracious, giving, thoughtful, present. If you want to reap friends who keep it real and tell you how it is, who tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, who bless your life and who add value to your life, then be that type of friend. You set the culture for friendship in your own life. You set the culture for friendship in your own life and you can make 2022 and beyond fruitful with friendship by planting the seed of the type of friendships that you want to harvest. And the way that you can do this is by making this intentional decision. Here it is. It's going to come up on your screen. I will take ownership of growing the friendships in my life by eliminating busyness and by being the friend to others that I want to have for myself. In fact, We've been saying these intentional decisions each and every week together as a church during the course of this series. And so I think that we should just say this intentional decision together right now, just right where you are in your home. Maybe you're with some people and that's fine. Let's say this intentional decision out loud and together as a commitment of how we will grow relationally. I will take ownership of growing the friendships in my life by eliminating busyness and by being the friend to others that I want to have myself. This intentional decision will enhance your relational health and it will reverse regret number five. So on this Sunday after Christmas, I can think of no better way to close up our time together than by considering how it is that Jesus Christ best models what a true friend looks like for us. You know, the wonderful thing about Christmas is that Jesus Christ came nearly 2000 years ago on the first Christmas morning so that he could not only become our savior, our Messiah, our Lord, our King, but so that he could also become our friend. (laughs) That's such good news today. Jesus even says in John chapter 15, this will come up on your screen. He says, no longer do I call you servants, For the servants do not know what the master is doing, but I've called you friends. Jesus goes on and he says, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. I love just the simple truth that Jesus calls us his friends. He affirms his loving friendship with us by laying down his life for us. 
true friendship is available to us with Jesus Christ. He's inviting us to enter into deeper, sweeter, fulfilling, life-changing friendships with Him next year. And as badly as we need friends in this life, and we do, friendship and relationship with Jesus Christ is all the more important. I mean, just imagine a whole year of spending time with Jesus and experiencing the friendship of Christ. This is truly how we set the culture of friendships in our lives. It starts with Christ and our friendship with Him. It affects the friendship seeds that we plant and ultimately the friendship fruit that we harvest. So as we close down this worship experience, I just want you to know that our prayer for you as a church as we enter into 2022 and and as we just venture into the future together is that you would experience the kind of grace-filled and life-changing, all-consuming friendship with Jesus Christ. Not just every once in a while, but every day for all your days. And that friendship with him would flood over and positively change your friendships with others so that you can cultivate a healthy culture of friendship in your life. And so that regret number five has no sway, truth, or relevance over you. Hey, I just wanna thank you for taking some time out of your Christmas celebrations to worship with us this morning. I'm about to pray and then do our benediction. And then we can't wait to see you join us next week, both in person and online as we close out our Christmas series. But before we do that, let me just go ahead and say a prayer over you. So if you're at home right now with some some people, maybe you're with some family or some friends, why don't you just go ahead and, and just open up your palms toward heaven. Maybe you even wanna grab the hands of those that you're with right now and, and just pray in faith together. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for your love in this moment. Lord, we thank you for 2021 and for God, just all that you've done in our lives, Lord, we trust that our lives are in your hands, that your grace is working inside of us. And God, I just pray that this year, this next year, 2022, would be a breakthrough year for every single person watching right now, God, that you would bring the type of friends into their lives that they've been longing for and praying for. And God, that even you would grow us deeper in love and friendship with your son and our savior, Jesus Christ, as his Holy Spirit dwells within us. May we be drawn closer to you than ever before next year. I pray that in Jesus' name over you right now. And before we leave, let us say and pray our benediction together. It'll come up on your screens. Romans 15, 13, here it is. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Merry Christmas, A2 Church. Happy New Year. We can't wait to see you in person and online next Sunday as we close out our Christmas series. We'll see you next year. (laughs) Thanks so much for worshiping with us. Check us out on YouTube and on all of our social media channels. So you don't miss any of the action, be sure to follow us and subscribe. We meet on campus and online every Sunday at 9 and 10.30 a.m. We also post on-demand content on a2.church and our YouTube channel at least every Sunday afternoon. If you were inspired by today's message and you want to partner with us in sharing God's love in this message, you can do so by going to a2.church slash give. For more info about A2 and the additional content we make available, click the link in the description below or just visit us at a2.church. Again, thank you for watching and worshiping. God bless.